Satellite maker OneWeb recently took the first steps toward its goal of building a space internet. In other words, using thousands of satellites to help provide Wi-Fi access to everyone on the planet. Ashley Vance reports on OneWeb in the latest edition of Bloomberg Business Week. He joins us now from Palo Alto. And Ashley, you report on OneWeb's very first launch from the heart of the Amazon. How did that go? It was pretty interesting. Uh, yeah, you know, the I was in French Guiana, which is up at the, the tip of South America, and, and I've been covering OneWeb for several years now, waiting for them to get to this point. And, and so finally, you know, they've launched the first six of what's meant to be 1,980 satellites. So what exactly does OneWeb hope to accomplish, and how are they taking on Elon Musk? So both companies, SpaceX and OneWeb, are in this game to do what you could call a space internet. And, and basically today, there's still about 3 billion people that, that can't be reached by fiber optic cables. And so they want the same internet that the rest of us enjoy. And so these companies are racing to provide this. OneWeb started out very much preaching this, this do-gooder type mission of bringing the internet to, to people that don't have it. They tend to be um, in pretty poor and remote locations. As time has gone on, OneWeb's found out that the service is very expensive to build, and so some of the first customers they're talking about going after now are actually you know, delivering high-speed internet to planes, to cars, to boats, and, and people that can afford to pay for this service when they're in a remote location. Um, but essentially, SpaceX and OneWeb are racing after the same thing, and there's a couple other companies that are, that are doing this as well. So who's going to get there first? Well, SpaceX set up a couple satellites last year. They were test satellites for its system that it calls Starlink. It's unclear right now how well those are working or where SpaceX is as far as, as mass producing its satellites. So in some sense, OneWeb has the lead now. It's put up six satellites. They seem to be working. There's also a lot of other stuff that goes into this. You have to have these cheap antennas to receive the signal back on Earth. You have to have spectrum available to let you run this service globally. And it looks like OneWeb is ahead of just about everyone when you take all these pieces together. Um, but SpaceX and Elon, as, as usual, keep talking a big game and say, you know, they're coming as well this year with hundreds of satellites. There's some personal tension between the founder of OneWeb and Musk. Tell us about that. Yeah, the founder of OneWeb is this guy named Greg Weiler. He's a pretty interesting character that I've profiled over the years. And, and at one point, he was basically working inside of Google. And, and when he first started thinking of this, this space internet idea, it looked like he might build it in conjunction with Google. And then at some point, he was, became friends with Elon. And, and they were talking about the, the space internet. And it looked like all three of these groups might get together, Greg, Elon, and Google. And as time went on, Greg basically woke up one day and, and found out that SpaceX was determined to build its own space internet. SpaceX brought Google on as a founder, and OneWeb had to run out and get people like Richard Branson's Virgin Group and SoftBank and Qualcomm to fund its project. And so, especially for Greg Weiler, um, you know, this is a, on a personal level, I think this is some serious competition, and he, he would like to get there before Elon. Meantime, the amount of stuff being sent into space is rapidly increasing. You write that current satellite orders would increase the amount of hardware orbiting Earth by five times just over the next few years. What is all this other stuff doing? Yeah, I mean, I think we're at this really interesting point with space and, and rockets and satellites that, that most people aren't aware of, which is that the price of rockets has come down dramatically. There's a ton of small rocket companies that are just starting to launch, like Rocket Lab now, that, that are bringing the price even further down. Uh, the price of satellites has come way down from a from billion dollars to $100,000 for these small shoebox-sized satellites. And so currently orbiting the Earth, I think there's about 1,500 satellites. And if you look at the, the launch manifest for the rocket companies and these satellite companies like OneWeb and SpaceX, that 1,500 number over the next five years could go as high as some people have it at 20, 30,000, 40,000 satellites surrounding the Earth. And 
I sort of think of it as them building a type of computing shell that's going to surround the Earth. It's going to be doing stuff like communications with the space internet. It's going to be taking pictures of the Earth every day. Already, this company, Planet Labs, takes a picture of, of every spot on Earth every single day. There's all kinds of new science that's going to be taking place. And um, you know, I just don't think most people are aware that, that the skies are about to be filled with, with many, many, many times more satellites than, than we've ever seen before. Meantime, since you wrote the bio on Elon Musk, I got to ask you about the latest kerfuffle with the SEC, the SEC asking Musk to be held in contempt, him responding, saying, you know, he's got a constitutional right to free speech. Um, you know, in the meantime, this abrupt about face on store closings, he announced they were going to close all the stores. Then a week later that, you know, half the stores would, would, would remain open. What's your take on Musk in 2019? Big question. <laughs> it's, it's an interesting time for sure. I, I was enjoying the free speech argument. Um, you know, there's a part of Elon that's just so perplexing, which is, is kind of why he's on Twitter doing this stuff at all. Um, it seems to just create more problems from him. I think historically he used Twitter really well as this marketing tool, Tesla doesn't buy any ads and, and Elon had all the, the goodwill of, of people on Twitter and, and, you know, really seemed to get Tesla an outsized share of attention. Um, over the last year to 18 months, it's shifted to where you still have some of that and then you, you have Elon um, just going off into some pretty weird places and, and appearing to be... I think it's perplexing to a lot of people, but but this stuff fighting the SEC and everything, that's classic Elon. I mean, he's defiant to the end and is going to stick by by what he thinks is, is the right thing to do. Um, but I just, you know, I just have to think at some point this is causing more harm than good overall for him.